Nowadays, we all take for granted that you can pay for stuff with bills and coins, but you know someone had to start the whole system up, right? And there's no guarantee that things would work out. In the Nara period, Japan started making coins for money. It was a great plan. It was going to be stable. It was going to make the government strong. It was... it... it failed. Psst. Hey guys, to see more videos like this and help the channel grow, click subscribe and the bell. It only takes 0.9 seconds. Thanks. The next time you're at a cash-only Asian restaurant, frantically digging into your wallet while muttering something about dirty tax dodgers, remember that paper and coin money was an outstanding, tremendous idea back in the day, even though it's a pain in the ass now. Also remember that this is how we Asians take over America. You white people may as well give up now. You had a good run. Let us take over and we'll do math and stuff. Around the Nara time period, people were mainly using rice and fabrics as currency. They use other things too, but rice and fabric were the most popular. Those had problems though. Rice took up a lot of space. It could mold, rodents liked to eat it, and you couldn't store it for long. So you had to spend your rice quickly. Saving piles of rice for retirement wasn't an option. Now fabric was pretty good actually, but it could rip and get stained and get eaten by bugs. But the main reasons the Japanese imperial court decided to mint coins was not because of those issues. The nobles and courts wanted to conserve valuable goods instead of having people use them for currency. And also, they wanted money, money, money. Now, if you think it's easy to get people to adopt a coinage system, think again. In 708, the courts released silver and copper coins to the public and immediately hit a wall of problems. The silver coins were a bust. In the early 700s, silver was rare. The value of the silver in the coins was likely worth more than the face value of the coins. But the face value was already too high for normal everyday usage. Not only that, people immediately made counterfeit coins by mixing in cheaper metals. And the fake coins began driving the good coins out of circulation. The government soon admitted defeat and stopped the whole silver coin business. Copper coins had a much longer run. This was when the court was moving the capital from Fujiwara to Nara. Copper coins funded the massive project. The government put them into circulation by paying the construction workers with copper coins. They also started paying in coin to government officials and workers on other projects. Now, when you launch a new currency, you want it to circulate. People hoarding coins kept them out of circulation. It turned out hoarders were a big problem because we found a government's order condemning people who hoarded coins, demanding that they return the coins to the government. To help with this problem, the courts allowed people to exchange coins for court ranks, basically buying government positions. So things haven't really changed. Inflation became a huge headache. At first, it seemed like the copper coins were a major success. They were worth much more than they took to make, netting huge profits for the Japanese court. People at the top were rolling in cash. It didn't last. Nature took its course, and people started making counterfeit coins. Think about how hard it was to catch a counterfeiter back in those days. There were no serial numbers. If you could replicate a coin, you could introduce it into the economy and it would have been impossible to trace it back to you. It would have been hard to even differentiate a real coin from a fake one. A government document in 760 claimed that half, half of all copper coins were fake. The fake coins led to inflation. The government saw this and thought, hey, let's make it worse and made even more coins faster. It was too profitable not to. And then, if that wasn't bad enough, something happened out of nowhere that no one anticipated. Trump won the election. No. Between 735 and 737, a smallpox epidemic hit Japan, killing one-fourth to one-third of the population. Such a deadly plague deserves more discussion. But since we're just talking economics at the moment, we'll just ignore all the death, destruction, and suffering. The sudden drop in workers caused havoc in the supply chain and resulted in temporary shortages of food and goods, driving up prices and inflation. That was only temporary, though. In the wake of the smallpox epidemic, after the initial shortages, things were pretty good, economically. A bunch of people were still dead, which was a good thing, economically. You see, being dead meant you didn't need to buy things, and there were a lot of dead people who didn't buy things. It drove down the demand for goods, allowing the high inflation to subside. But then the courts ran into another problem. 
Having so many taxpayers die really hurts tax revenue. They tried to counter this in a few ways. They started offering government loans, which helped but wasn't enough. Then, in 760, they minted another copper coin at a higher value. Unfortunately, in an attempt to reap the prolific profits of the past, they made this coin ten times the value of the previous one. Inflation again skyrocketed and didn't stop. Over the next two centuries, they kept minting different coins at higher and higher values. The coins kept getting smaller and contained lesser amounts of copper. It was a mess. In the 900s, the courts finally said, we give up, and stopped the coinage effort. The government began paying in commodities again, like rice. There were other factors that led to this, of course, but the mess they had with coins was a big factor. And so, the great Nara money experiment failed. Japan didn't use coins again until much later. Now, just because they had to stop making coins doesn't mean the whole endeavor was a waste. In fact, it was extremely profitable for the aristocracy in the Nara period. It swelled the imperial courts' wealth and funded many government projects, including the Nara capital itself. So if you look at it from the perspective of the people at the top, the whole thing turned out pretty well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, click on my Patreon link in the description and consider becoming a patron. If each subscriber donates just one or two bucks a month, we can keep this channel going indefinitely. Help me not starve. This video is actually made possible by the patrons. One of our goals was for a subscription to JSTOR, and the info for this video was from an article on JSTOR. So thank you guys. Love ya.